Oh, good morning. Welcome everyone to the Global Animal Disaster Management Conference for 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and esteemed participants, I stand before you today at the opening of GADMAC 2023. My name is Dr. Steve Glassy, and I'm the patron of Animal Evac New Zealand and the chair of the Global Animal, Animal Disaster Management uh, Committee. It's my honor to address this esteemed gathering of experts, professionals, and advocates who have dedicated their lives in protecting and safeguarding animals uh, in times of crises. As we gather here today, let us reflect on the journey that we've undertaken since GADMAC 2021. The world has witnessed numerous challenges, both natural and technological, and have tested our resolve and expose the vulnerabilities within our global animal disaster management systems, from devastating wildfires to hurricanes to zoonotic disease outbreaks, we have witnessed the profound impact of these crises on our animal populations. These challenges have also served as a wake up call, urging us to reevaluate our approach to animal disaster management. It is crucial that we recognize the interconnectedness of our actions and their consequences on animal welfare. And we no longer can turn a blind eye to the suffering and disregard and blind eye to suffering and disregard the urgent need for change. Today, I ask each and every one of you to champion this change, to become agents of progress in your respective fields. One key that demands our immediate attention is the improvement of laws and regulations governing animal disaster management. We must strive for a comprehensive, inclusive, robust and enforceable legislation that provide a solid framework for protecting animals in times of crises. By advocating for improved laws, we can address the gaps in the current systems, ensuring that we take in all animal inclusive approach to community resilience. This means pushing for legislation that mandates for the inclusion of animals and in disaster management plans, allocating resources for their rescue and care and holding guardians and government to account under a shared responsibility approach. And engaging this essential work requires collaboration, coordination among governments, NGOs, academia, and communities. And it's through the collective efforts of all stakeholders that we can make a lasting impact. Let us harness the power of partnerships, share knowledge and best practices, and work together to create a world where animals are not forgotten or left behind in the face of disaster. We have come a long way, even in just a few decades. I recall researching animal, I, I recall uh, researching emergency plans in New Zealand uh, to find the Hutt City Council or municipality level plan saying that companion animals would compete with humans for food. And I, I don't know about you, um, but I'm quite happy to leave the, the dog of dog food uh, for my dog to eat, even in a disaster. I recall conversations with fellow emergency managers who were not given the support, tools or information to incorporate animals into their disaster plans. And their default position was, well, just shoot them. Current and proposed emergency management laws in New Zealand continue to give unbridled power to officials to unilaterally destroy animals. And, and they're also given statutory uh, protection from liability and this needs, to, this needs to be challenged. However, we have made great strides globally. And today we're here because of the pioneers of the past, such as Dr. Sebastian Heath, Dr. Dick Green, and Professor Les Leslie Irvine, who have all contributed greatly into establishing the early body of, of knowledge around the emerging discipline of animal disaster management and would like to thank them for their significant contributions over the years. As a society, we have evolved to better un to understand the intrinsic link between humans and animals, better known as the human-animal bond, and how this influences 
human behavior in emergencies. Renowned scholar Eric Oftenhide once said that emergency plans should be based on likely behavior, not correct behavior. And the old mantra was that human lives was first and animals were second. But we know now that it's not that simple. And for many people, their animals are critical to the emotional survival and their livelihoods. I recall having dinner with the two good friends in Bangkok some, some time ago. They had never met. Uh, one was a veterinarian specializing in disaster response. The other, a humanitarian aid worker specializing in child, protect, um, child uh, protection. As the conversation developed, the, the veterinarian spoke about his work saving animals in disaster. Intuitively, he picked up uh, that my humanitarian aid colleague had a look on his face that begged the question, why on earth are you worrying about the animals when there is children to be saved in these disasters? With great humility, he went on to, to say that when rural families lost their, their cattle in the floods, they lost their only source of income. And consequently, consequently, their daughters were sent in the city to be underage sex workers. Restocking efforts by the animal NGO had direct benefits to stop child exploitation. Saving animals saves human lives, whether it be in the US or Thailand. We need to embrace the concept of values-based emergency management as espoused by Damon Coppola and others. We need to focus on emergency management efforts on not what we think, but what communities value. And animals rank highly, uh, highly valuable on the spectrum. In New Zealand, the emergency management legislation is up for review and public submissions are now being called for for the emergency management bill by Parliament's Government and Administration Select Committee. For countries like New Zealand, now is a prime opportunity to develop world-leading animal-inclusive disaster management law like that in the US. Most of us know that following Hurricane Katrina in 2005, just a year later, the Pet Emergency Transportation and Standards Act, or PETS Act, was passed. The Fritz Institute found that 44% of those that chose to stay behind in Hurricane Katrina did so, at least in part, because they could not take their animals. Again, we come back to the philosophy that saving animals saves human lives. In the Animal Evac New Zealand handover report to Parliament in 2019, we were privileged to have former FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Agency, Administrator Craig Fugate as a speaker. There would be very few people in this world that would have the depth of emergency management expertise that Craig has. When you have one of the world's leading authorities in emergency management championing your message, you know you're on the right path. And I'm just going to take a moment to share one of his videos. First thing is, when anybody you know starts talking about animal issues, you're going to have the naysayers say, "But people are first. People should be, you know, the primary goal here. You know, not pets." And I would go, "Pets are a people problem." Uh, from my earliest days working at the local level of government, where we had to evacuate for a chemical emergency, we had this toxic cloud of gas going across the highway. We had. law enforcement police officer out stopping traffic and cars were whizzing past them going into the cloud we're like who are these crazy people they were going home to rescue their pets i mean they consciously drove through a toxic cloud to get to their pets but at that time our messaging and disasters was if you had to evacuate evacuate but leave your pets behind with plenty of food and water and i'm like isn't that kind of a mixed <clears throat> message? Because either I'm saying it's your pet's last meal or it's not that bad and you don't really need to go. But we had kind of broken this down into people first, pets maybe, but they're not important. 
So this year's GADMAC has a wide range of speakers and topics. We have world-class speakers donating their time to present, such as Jackson Z, Gerardo Hattes, Jennifer Gardner, Rebecca Husted, Dick Green, Ellen Kalman, James Sawyer, Mel Taylor, just to name a few. We also welcome emerging champions for change, such as Altamish Sayed, who is supporting our vision for the development of model animal disaster law and mechanisms for accountability. True to the label on the tin, GADMAC is global. We have nearly every continent covered with presenters from India, Ukraine, USA, UK, Portugal, Canada, Australia, Nicaragua, Austria, Turkey, Italy, Colombia, Costa Rica, Bulgaria, and the Netherlands. New to GADMAC is our webinar is available with live closed captions in over 16 languages. And as our recordings are made available later on YouTube, they will also be available in a wide range of closed caption languages. GADMAC is free to attend and free to present and view. And this has only been made possible through the generosity of our sponsors. This year, we, are, we welcome Four Paws International is our platinum sponsor, and a special thank you to Dr. Jackson Z for his support and wise counsel. With our focus on mitigating disaster harm through, um, with our focus on mitigating uh, disaster harm to animals through legislation, it is fitting that he presents championing animal disaster law at an international level during his keynote session at session D. We are also humbled to have the support of other iconic organizations and sponsors, such as our gold sponsors, the American Veterinary Medical Foundation, uh, Humane Society International, and the International Fund for Animal Welfare. GADMAC has become an important and iconic event because of its truly global reach and impact. And most importantly, because of our genuine vision to create an animal inclusive disaster resilient community. We have doubled the number of delegates from 1100 to 2200 since our first conference. And I'd like to take the time to thank my colleagues on the GADMAC organizing committee, Gerardo Hutez, Mel Taylor, Rebecca Husted, uh, Jenny Rose Gay, and our coordinator, Christina Giva, for their efforts to launch GADMAC 2023. We also like to thank the Australian Journal of Emergency Management and its editor, Christine Boucher, who have kindly partnered with us again to publish articles arising from the conference. Again, such articles are being freely made available as AGEM is an open access journal. For those that have not heard of Animal EVAC, we're a small animal disaster management advocacy charity in New Zealand. Uh, we have no staff, no vehicles, very limited budget, but we have championed change beyond our report to parliament. With the successful uh, resolution of the country's first animal disaster bylaw at the municipality level, the first pet friendly evacuation uh, operational guideline plan ex and exercise, as well as responding to disasters internationally and locally, such as the 2019 to 2020 New South Wales bushfires in Australia. Our efforts with GADMAC uh, in 2021 won us the IAEM, the International Association of Emergency Managers, Partners and Preparedness Award for Oceania Region. We were also awarded supreme winners of the Wellington Regional Community Awards, for our wider efforts uh, in 2021. A big thank you to all the Animal EVAC volunteers, some 400 throughout New Zealand. I'd invite you to support the work of Animal EVAC New Zealand through making a donation through our website or on the QR code supplied uh, later. As we embark on this conference, I urge you all to seize the opportunity to connect, to learn, to inspire one another, let us engage in thought-provoking conversations and discussions, exchange ideas, and forge alliances that will shape the trajectory of animal disaster management for years to come. 
join us on Facebook and LinkedIn and use the hashtag GADMAC dot, sorry, GADMAC, well, G-A-D-M-C-O-N-F, uh, to spread the good work being showcased over the next few days. Um, together, we can overcome the challenges we have faced and build a future where animals are, are merely, we are not merely a victim of circumstance, but recipients of our unwavering compassion and protection. Let us champion change. Let us be the catalyst for progress and leave us a legacy that our future generations will be proud to inherit. So thank you. May this conference be a resounding success in our collective pursuit of a better world for animals in times of disaster.